What's happening, everybody? How are y'all all doing, huh? Did you have a good Father's Day? Well, I did. I had the kind of Father's Day that I don't want to say only a father could dream of or anything like that, but I had a Father's Day that was filled with adventure. Let's put it that way. Let me set the stage for you about the video you're about to see. Let's just go back to Friday, the Friday before Father's Day. I had kind of made my mind up on Friday that I was going to do something silly on Sunday. Now, in my world, that can go a lot of different directions. But there's something that I've been wanting to do because of a lot of other people's ideas and a lot of other people's comments and things like that. And uh, I'm just going to say that the first thing I did Friday when I got home from work was I changed the oil in the monkey. Did a little bit of a clutch adjustment on the monkey. And I had made my mind up that I was going to take the monkey Sunday morning early and I was going to head to Nags Head, North Carolina. Now, I live in Newport News, which is by interstate not that far away. Almost two hours, two hour drive, if the traffic's good. But that's on the interstate. Obviously, the monkey is not an interstate driven machine. So what I did was I changed the oil Friday, got him good and cleaned up and tuned up on Saturday, and Sunday morning I got on and I bolted for North Carolina. What you're about to see is basically turning on the GPS, no tolls, no highways, all back roads, and it added about another about another hour to the trip. But that's okay because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to see the back roads. That's, that's the whole idea behind the monkey in the first place. Now don't get me wrong, some of those roads are 55 miles per hour. But because the interstate is traveled more so than the back roads, that early in the morning I didn't feel like I was going to have too many issues. And I didn't. Not till I came home. But that's what we're going to talk about at the end of the video. So anyway, let's get on to the video. I'll see you at the end. Should have brought my fishing pole. We are sitting on top of the James River Bridge because they're opening the bridge for that. Some sort of barge, I guess. That's the Newport New Shipyard over there. Anybody wants to know? Well, this shouldn't take too long.
So we've made our first fuel stop. Um, I'm in North Carolina, I, and I crossed into it somewhere, and I got no idea where, because when you're taking all the back roads, it's not exactly like there's a whole lot of signs telling you that you've crossed into North Carolina. We've had a few backups. We had a car accident that made us take a different route. Anyway, we're going to get back on the road. It's saying 1051, we should be where we need to be in Nags Head. And uh, it is right at 10 o'clock on the dot. I'm getting extremely hungry. But uh, I went about 75 miles, or let me see. I think 70, 70 miles before I filled up again, just in case. Not that we would be, you know, without a gas station, but just went ahead and filled up. Monkey's doing great. I've missed a couple of shifts because my feet have gone numb. <laughs> anyway, let's get back on the roof. Digger's Dungeon, home of the Grave Digger. Just thought I'd make a quick stop here. And put the tiniest thing in the parking lot in front of the biggest thing in the parking lot. the first place you always got to stop when you come into Nags Head or Kill Devil Hills is the Wright Brothers Memorial. That's right. Wilbur and Orville put airplanes in the air and they weren't just runway planes. Road planes? I don't know. But this is the area that they took off from. Unfortunately, it costs a lot to get in there to look at it. But it's pretty neat. What's even neater is that I'm sitting... on a Honda Monkey that's done 125 miles from Newport News, Virginia all the way to Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. This has been a blast so far. So Wilbur and Orwell, first in flight. Willie Gray, first on a Honda Monkey to the Wright Brothers Memorial. Maybe, I, I can only assume. Nobody else would be this dumb. I just thought I'd make a quick stop here just to show you if you ever are in Nags Head and you want to do any kind of fishing whatsoever, that's where you go. TWs, without a doubt, the best tackle and fishing equipment of any kind that you can buy around.
Okay, we are at a very, well, touristy spot here in Axhead, but regardless, it's called Jockey's Ridge. Never seen a ridge, always seen a really big old sand dune, and I'm not sure why there's a jockey, but that's what they call it. Here we go, Jockey's Ridge. Thing looks lonely sitting back here in the parking lot, don't it? I just hope it's here when I come back. And just in case you've ever wanted to, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, if you've ever wanted to learn to hang glide, they actually teach it here. It's 85 degrees. I'm in jeans and boots. Walking a giant sand dune. Happy Father's Day. Might be your last one. Thank God for you, little monkey. Let's get in the wind. I'm dying. so sure we're going to see the lighthouse today. This road, this road is about 20 miles long and I haven't even gotten through the first mile and a half yet. We're already seeing traffic. So I finally got a chance to stop and eat, which has been all day long affair because uh, the traffic the parking is absolutely ridiculous and i mean ridiculous i haven't been able to see the ocean all all of the public beach accesses are totally full you can't i can't even park the monkey got places closed off all the fishing piers are closed off you can't get in them they're so full so if you do come to nags head prepare yourself especially if you come during the season anyway i'm gonna eat That was one of the biggest and best shrimp cowboys I've ever had in my life. It's going to be a long ride home, but that's where we're headed now. Home. Whew. What a day.
Well, there you go. It was a long day. A long day. I left the house at around 8 o'clock in the morning. Got to Nags Head somewhere in the 10.30ish range. Spent about four and a half, four, four and a half hours riding around Nags Head as the traffic and the crowds began to pour in. It was almost like somebody tilted the United States towards Nags Head and the people just started flooding in. It was a shame, really, to go all that way and never get to see the ocean. The parking lots for the public parking to be able to go to the beach, the cars were lined up out into the beach road. Wright Brothers Memorial, there was a line of cars going in there half a mile long, four rows. All four of the places that you pay, the booths as you go in, were just lined with cars. Um, I was extremely happy to have gotten to find a place to park at Jockey's Ridge. I was extremely surprised how few people there were there. That's, that's amazing, because that's usually quite full. To go to Corolla or Duck, it's two lanes, one in and one out. Going in on a Sunday is easy if it's seven o'clock in the morning because everybody's leaving who have rented cottages and things like that. Everybody's leaving. But after they're said and done, which I think they usually have to be out by 11 o'clock or noon from their cottages, the people who are now re-renting are on their way in to get to the cottages that the people have just left. So what happens is you wind up in an incredibly long traffic jam. That road to the lighthouse, all the way into Corolla and Duck, that area where the lighthouse is at, is 20 miles. 20 miles of just two lane, one in, one out. And uh, if you get stuck in the traffic going in, you're stuck. Uh, I made it in three miles. That's when you started seeing the traffic jam and I ended up turning around and leaving because I was in three miles so you're looking at a roughly a 15 mile to 17 mile backup of people just turning into driveways or neighborhoods or what have you. I know in the past I have said that I would never put the monkey through anything like that but it has been and I don't want to say a dream um, it has been on my mind a lot to take a decently long journey on the monkey, not killing it, but a decently long back road journey on the monkey just to see how well, one, it can handle it, two, how well I can handle it, the comfort of the ride and all that kind of stuff, and have I just been talking gibberish, you know, and just basically the monkey is an all-out, get-out-there-and-go machine? So let's start off with this. Capable and made to, okay? Obviously, the monkey's capable. It did it. There were some issues along the way. A couple of times it was jumping in and out of gear. Sometimes it was hard to get to go into gear. Sometimes it would only go in neutral from pushing down. It would skip it every time coming up, and it was a little chunky. Um, I have adjusted the clutch myself, and I'm not going to deny that I have it. I have. But I have adjusted it to the exact specifications that comes in the owner's manual. So, what is it doing? I'm not sure. I don't really know. Maybe it was just too much, because... I'll tell you this, going into Nags Head, there was a stretch during the, uh, the Dismal Swamp. That's what that place is called, the Great Dismal Swamp, which has obviously been there for quite some time. I've never seen it in that frame before, but it was incredible. Well, that was 17 miles. The 17-mile stretch was a 55-mile-per-hour road, but I had no traffic bothering me, none to deal with in any way, shape, or form. That road was basically empty. It wasn't until I got out to the main road going into Nags Head that I started finding traffic. And even then, they were able to go around me fairly easily. So, at this point, at the beginning of the trip, I'm okay. Everything's good. Seat's comfortable. Bike's doing good. Everything is wonderful. It's zipping along. Not a problem. 
going into town, being in town and stoplight to stoplight, uh, shifting gears and so that's when gears started missing. You know, it, I even heard it chatter a couple times. It didn't go completely into gear. I do believe I'm going to have that looked at and not just let my adjustment be the last thing that it sees. So I might have that looked at and try to find out what's going on there. But it was incredibly hot. It got 85 degrees, um, 90 by the time I was coming home. And so, but I was moving pretty good. You know, I don't think I ever ran slower than 35 until I tried to go into duck and then I turned around and came out. But other than that, the wind and everything was coming across it pretty good. Maybe an oil cooler is, is in my monkey's future. Maybe I need to take a look at spark plugs, see how that's doing. I've only used ethanol free gas in that bike since I bought it until we went to Nags Head. Then I used 93 octane. The highest I could find was 93 and that's what I used in it. Okay, so comfort. The bike did okay. I was feeling pretty good. The seat was comfortable. My backrest was great. Helpful, extremely helpful to be able to lean back and not have to hold yourself up or be hunched over. Speaking of hunched over, I spent a lot of time hunched over on the way home because the traffic was terrible and people were riding right on my hiney. So I had my head between the handlebars, down between the mirrors, and knees tucked against the tank. And there was a couple of times I got up to 63 miles per hour because I was drafting off of the vehicle in front of me. I managed to get behind a camper that was running about 57 to 60. And I could pull the clutch in and actually feel the wind pull me along with this gentleman's camper, thank God, that helped quite a bit. But I was going pretty fast. I was going pretty fast. Did the monkey handle it? Yes, it did. It handled it fine. I There was a couple of times that the, I had the throttle pegged, buried. I mean, couldn't go no further. Well, no way. Not without twisting the handlebars all the way around too. I was worried that I was going to end up destroying something. But... Uh, that was 38 miles because uh, for whatever reason the GPS didn't take me home the same way that it brought me in. That day was two and a half hours there, four and a half hours riding around, and another three hours home. It was a long ride. That's a long ride, especially when you think that the only time I was really off the monkey was when I walked Jockey's Ridge, when I went to TW's uh, tackle shop. Um, which I never went inside, I only filmed it for you guys, and uh, when I ate. All the rest of that time, I was on that bike. So I um, pretty well imprinted on the seat of that thing, to say the least. But did it handle it? It did. But I'm telling you now, I will not do that type of trip again. That's why I bought the Royal Enfield. So that brings me back around to capable and made for. Capable it is. Will you shorten its lifespan? Probably. If you want to keep the throttle pegged everywhere you go. Yeah, most likely. You'll be doing some repairs eventually. Or it may last forever and just do like old Hondas all do. They just smoke like trains and keep on going. Burn oil and whatever. But I don't want mine to do that and I don't have the money to replace the engine so no more trips like that probably. I hope uh, I've helped some of you with uh, the yeses and nos of the Honda Monkey and what you want it for and what it's good at and what it's capable of or kind of two different things. I think that in between 45 and 50 is where that bike is at home. Now that is the four speed version. That extra fifth gear, I can't tell you anything about because I don't have it. So I don't know if that fifth gear would have helped me or if it would have made a difference. I really don't because you still have the same horsepower and now you have a bigger gear to try to pull. I don't know what to tell you there because in fourth gear going uphill with the wind hitting me, I slow down on the bridges and things like that a lot. So there you go. There is my answer for all of that fun stuff. I hope that helps you out. Thank you guys for watching. I very, very much appreciate all of you. Hey, we're very close to 1,000 subscribers. I think we're at 914, 9 something. So if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that thing. Give me a thumbs up. Comment if you'd like. Do whatever it takes. Call a friend. 
even if they don't have YouTube, tell them to download the darn thing and subscribe. I like to see what a thousand is like. You never know. Could go big time. Might buy a drone. Yeah, I know. I know what you're thinking. I know. I just break it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I very much appreciate you all. See you on the next one, whatever the next one may be. Hey, boo. I'm hungry. Dang it. I say that every time.